let's just talk about a couple situations, uh, special situations that you may get into and some things that I've had some questions on for the videos that I put up. So I just want to hope that this will clarify a little bit. So we're talking about the drains. If it's coming out through the incision, all the doctors I had worked with had put the drains when they were coming out in the corner of the incision. The blue is the drain, black is suture, and the red is the skin edge. So when you put it in the corner, when you take it out, here's what you end up with. You end up with a round hole at the corner of your incision. Round holes with nothing to close it or hold it closed or on this side. Round holes do not tend to close that well on the human body, so they might end up with a little bit more of a scar on this one. Then one of the other plastic surgeons, uh, Dr. Back, Lyle Back that I worked with, he does it this way. When I worked with him, I realized that his drain was back from the corner. He would put the stitch on either side of the drain and you have to make sure that you don't catch the drain in either your deep dermals or your uh, running subcuticular or the drain won't come out in the office. So he puts it in medial to the corner of the incision, which is here. And then when he takes it out, here's where the drain was. You have a stitch on either side and the incision is continuing along. So you end up with a nice straight line. Now I had this on my video, but maybe you can see it closer. So you see here, I don't think I've done my running subcuticular here yet on this one. This is just deep dermals, but that's how close you can get them. So I do deep dermals here, keep it medial to the corner of the incision. And you can see how if you pull this out, that this would be a nice straight closure that this would want to close. Uh, I would do the, I do a couple interrupted here and then I do a, a simple interrupted on the outside lateral to this. And here you have running subcuticular, but you can see how that would close much better than if you had it on the corner of the incision. So on my running subcuticular, I've given it my own name because there are two different approaches that I've known um, that I do for this. And so I name it according to what the suture looks like when I do it. I have the Z stitch, which is the one I use the most. And this one will actually give you a bit of a stronger closure because it covers more of the incision. There's more suture to hold it together. The box stitch, uh, some people, I guess, use this all the time. Um, I've seen this used on fan and steels when you don't have as much tension on the incision that would work well. But if you have something with a lot of intent, uh, excuse me, a lot of tension, I would suggest doing the Z stitch. So on the Z stitch, remember in the corners, you don't want to take big stitches. You start out here and if you, um, then you have to start with you, go back to the other corner and then here, and then you're going to go up with your needle to just beyond where your last stitch was take your next bite. Now you can start making them a little bit bigger. And again, you go back to just beyond your last stitch, take a bite up to just beyond your last stitch, a bite. And when you see this, it ends up looking like a Z just beyond your last stitch and all the way up. And you have it all covered. You just do not want to go if you're here, you do not want to go behind your last stitch here or you've locked it. So you want to go beyond it and start just beyond it. So that's what I call the Z stitch, small in the corner. On the box stitch, you have to do the Z in the corner because if you don't, you have nothing to hold one side of the corner together. So you start with a Z here and then back to the corner, another Z and then up to just beyond and now you could start your box. So up and then straight across, over, straight across, another bite, straight across, another bite, straight across, another bite, straight across. And you continue to get to the other corner. And then in the other corner, again, you would do your Z stitch because you want both edges to come together. So you'd have to do that. So you can see on the box stitch that um, you can see the Z is covered all the way along the edge. You have suture on the box stitch. You have gaps on di different sides that have no suture to hold it closed. So this is going to be a slightly looser stitch. Now this is what it would look like if it was neat. Uh, you're doing the box stitch, you start with a Z in the corner and you're making it small. This side is a little too big. This is about the size that you would want about 
two, two to three centimeters, say two centimeters in the corner with your stitches. And then here the Z stitch, you can see how it resembles a Z, multiple Z's going together. So this is what it would look like if you could see under the skin. When you're doing the running septicular, the black is your suture, the red is your incision. I like it when you have you have a curved needle, first of all, that you're going in like this and the curved needle is taking a bite there to give you a nice deep bite of the dermis, a good bite. So you're going along with that. This is if you could see under the surface of the skin, this is what it would look like, right? So you have your incision edges that you've got to meet very nicely. So what happens if you want to pull that suture that you've just put in straight? Well, the skin is very flexible and it's going to try and accommodate you. So your suture will be straight. I'm going to move this out so I don't mess that one up. So your suture will be straight, but your incision, this part, you pull, try to pull this straight, then this part of the incision is going to move up that way. This part of the incision is going to move down. That's going to move up, trying to accommodate the straightness. And this is what you're going to end up with. Your suture under the skin that you don't see anyway is going to be straight and your skin is going to be ruffled over it because it's gotten pulled in so tight and then if you have swelling that's going to make it a little bit tighter so this is one that i had a question on i thought maybe if i just demonstrate it a little bit more uh hopefully i'm making it clear if you have a t-flap like on a breast or a radical neck anywhere where you have a double flap on one side that you're trying to con to close approximate with or one incision on the other side it's really important that as you're doing that stitch and going along you stop I'd probably be suturing toward myself so I'd be coming this way but for purposes of the way it's drawn we'll go this way so if you're suturing along here first of all I want you to understand that I am NOT tying off the stitch in the middle I am starting here with my stitch and continuing it all the way through to the end so what you want to do is you want to go along this side, then that side, and up on this side, and this side. You want to stop like um, two to three millimeters away from the T here, the double flap. And then you want to go up and you want to go through the double flap with the next stitch and then come back and start your next bite on the lower one back here beyond where that was. And then you would start going back over again. What that does is as you go along and you stop here, then you go through the double flaps and then you come back behind it. When you pull this stitch tight here, it pulls, it wants to pull this, all this back to here. So it will pull those two edges together and you'll get a T-flap that meets. So like I said, very important just to stop before you get to that T, then go through the T and then come back on it.